स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good morning and welcome to a lecture series introduction to interaction design. In the last uh, session we discussed the different uh, types of requirements, how they are identified and how clarity and communication is important to identify them. We also saw some additional data gathering techniques like user stories. So, today we will learn about a few more techniques like creating personas and scenarios. So, this is an integral step in the process of design. So, in the last lecture we saw how atomic requirements and user stories capture the essence of a requirement, but these are not sufficient on their own to express and communicate the products purpose and the vision. Both of these techniques can be augmented with prototypes, working systems, conversations, uh, diagrams, uh, documentations and other uh, methods. But which of these augmentation is required and how much? Uh, so, this will be determined by the kind of system under the development. So, in some cases capturing different aspects of the intended product. Uh, informal or structured representation is more appropriate. So, two techniques that are commonly used to augment the basic requirement information and to bring requirements to life are personas and uh, scenarios. So, these are often used together as they complement each other uh, and they bring out the realistic detail that allows the development to explore the user's current activities, future user uh, uh, requirements and maybe some futuristic visions of the technology. So, they can also guide development throughout the process cycle. So, personas are rich descriptions of typical users of the product under development on which the designers can focus and for which they can design products. So, personas do not describe specific people, but rather they are realistic and they are not idealized. So, any one persona represents a synthesis of a number of real users who have been involved in data gathering and it is based on a set of user profiles. So, uh, here each uh, persona is characterized by a unique set of goals relating to the particular product under development rather than a job description or a simple demographic. And here the goals uh, often differ among people within the same job role or the same demographic. In addition to their goals, a persona will include a description of the user's behavior, attitudes, activities and the environment. So, the advantage of personas is uh, their ability to provide a user centered perspective in the design and development process. So, key advantages are that we can generate user empathy, user focus, decision making, decision consistency and also problem identification. So, personas provide a user centric uh, framework that fosters empathy, focuses design efforts helps decision making and also facilitates the problem identification in the design and development process. So, in interaction design foundation encyclopedia article persona, uh, Nielsen who is a specialist in personas describes four different types of personas. So, this uh, ensures that they add the most value to the design uh, project. So, these are goal directed uh, personas. So, this uh, type of persona is very straightforward. So, it focuses on questions like what does a typical user want to do with my product. So, the objective 
of a goal directed persona is to examine the process and workflow that the user would prefer to utilize to achieve their goals in the uh, while they are interacting with the product or the surface service we are offering. So, there is an implicit or clear uh, assumption that you have already done enough user research to recognize uh, that the product has value to the user uh, and that uh, that by examining that user goals, we can bring their particular requirements to life. So, the goal based personas uh, are based upon the perspectives of Alan Cooper, who is an American software designer and programmer and is also considered the father of uh, visual basic. The second type of persona is the role based persona and this is also goal directed. So, at the same time also focuses on the behavior. So, these personas uh, which are role based per, uh, perspectives, so they are massively data driven and they incorporate data which is gathered from both qualitative and quantitative sources. So, the role based uh, perspectives focuses on the user's role in the organization. In some cases, our designs need to reflect upon the part that the users play in their organizations or in their lives. So, an examination of the roles that a uh, user plays in their real life, so that can help inform better product design decisions to the designer. So, questions like where will the product be used or what business objectives are required of this particular role. So, these uh, kind of questions can get us more clarity. The third is the engaging personas. So, engaging personas can incorporate both goal directed and role based personas. At the same time, they can also include the traditional uh, personas. So, these engaging personas are designed so that the designers who use them can become more engaged with them. The idea is to create a 3D rendering of a user through the use of these personas. The more people engage with the persona and uh, see them as real, the more likely they will be uh, they will probably likely to consider them in the process design and would want to serve them with the best product. So, uh, these personas examine the emotion of the users, their psychology, backgrounds and make them relevant to the task that is at hand. The perspective emphasizes how stories can engage and bring the personas to life. Now, fictional personas uh, do not emerge out of the user research uh, like we have seen in the previous personas, uh, but they emerge from the experience of the user experience design a uh, team's experience. So, it requires the team to make assumptions based upon their past interactions with the user uh, and products to deliver a picture of what perhaps the a typical user appears like. So, these personas uh, however, have a tendency to be challenging and also have certain flaws. So, the persona can help in uh, uh, at the initial sketch uh, of the user needs, because they allow for early involvement uh, with the users in the user experience design process, but they should not be used uh, as a sole guide for the development of the products or the services. So, let us understand the role of persona scenario and goals with the help of a small example. So, let us take a persona uh, for a mobile app user for a fitness enthusiast maybe uh, say Ramesh. 
So, Ramesh is a 30 year old uh, professional who works long hours and wants to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So, he enjoys activities uh, like cycling, swimming, running, weightlifting, etc. and he is motivated by tracking his progress, setting goals and receiving personalized recommendations. So, how we create a scenario for Ramesh? So, now one day uh, Ramesh decides to download our fitness application which will help him with his fitness journey. So, he wants an application that can track his workouts, provide exercise routines and offer some nutritional guidance. So, he is looking for a user friendly interface that suits his busy lifestyle and provides uh, some advice and motivation to stay consistent. Now, based on Ramesh's persona and the scenario, so we can identify his user goals. So, uh, one of the goals can be track the workouts. So, Ramesh wants to easily log his workouts including the time uh, uh, taken in the exercise, the intensity and other factors. So, he expects the app to be simple and intuitive and uh, also uh, which probably can also record his uh, workouts. The second goal can be access uh, the exercise routine. So, Ramesh is interested in having access to a variety of exercises routines uh, which are specifically tailored for his requirements and his preferences. So, he wants the app to recommend workout plans uh, based on his goals that he sees for himself. So, whether it is weight loss, uh, muscle gain or overall fitness. Now, third goal here can be uh, receiving the nutritional tips. So, he is looking at the overall fitness along with his physical health. So, he wants the app to provide relevant tips, meal plans uh, and information on the calorie that he is intaking. So, which can help support his long term goals. And finally, to stay motivated, Ramesh is looking for an app that keeps him motivated and engaged. So, he desires features where there is goal tracking, there is progress chart and reminders to engage him to stick to his uh, workout schedule. So, we can see that by understanding uh, Ramesh's persona and the scenario that he is in and his user goals. So, we can design an application that caters to his very specific needs and provides a personalized uh, fitness experience. So, a good persona is one that supports the kind of uh, reasoning that says what would the user do in this situation with the product and how would the user respond if the product behaves in a particular manner. But a good persona can be challenging to develop. So, the kind of information uh, that is included needs to be pertinent to the product that we are developing. So, for example, for uh, a mountain year, the persona would focus on the travel related behavior and attitude rather than say for example, the magazine the persona reads or where they buy their clothes from. But if we are designing uh, for a shopping center navigation system, then these other two aspects may be useful there. Now, we will come to the user scenarios. So, User scenarios are usually stories or narratives that describe how a user might interact with a product or system in a particular context or situation. So, uh, user scenarios are used to identify user needs, goals and behaviors and to design user interfaces that meet those needs and goals. So, we saw earlier an example of Ramesh who was the health enthusiast and how from the scenarios we could 
identify the goals. So, a, a use case model is a model of how different types of users interact with the system to solve a certain problem. So, it describes the goals of the users, the interactions between the users and the system and the required behavior of the system and how it satisfies the goals of the users. So, some of the model elements which are involved here are actor, use case and the associations. So, we will see that with the help of this example. So, we can see here that the trigger to initiate an action is when the subject you know places an order for food and the main flow is that the waiter receives this order and proceeds to provide this to the uh, cook for further uh, action. So, now the chef uh, has received a trigger to cook the food. So, this is the main flow of this example here, but at the same time we can see that there is an alternative path. So, what if the client also wants to order wine? So, so it is seen as an alternative of the normal behavior that is uh, expected from the actor. So, there are certain advantages and disadvantages of using cases. So, the advantages of uh, using cases is that because it makes us think of the behavior uh, that the user will have while using our system. So, we are more likely to develop a program that fulfills their needs, but at the same time the disadvantages are that they are not useful for capturing uh, non interaction based requirements. So, when the interactions of user systems have too many flows, the use cases can become very complex and it may prove to be useless when we are trying to use them to understand the development phase of the project. So, the term a scenario has uh, many uses. So, in wider uh, range and discussions within the software dis, uh, de development, they can range from prescript, uh, prescriptive to evocative. Prescriptive uh, scenarios focus on what should happen without considering the user needs and behaviors. They stem from use cases and describe all possible outcomes within a specific path. At the same time, this approach overlooks the user needs and treats users as if they were part of a program component. Now, user stories on the other hand, they have gained prominence by capturing user needs and promoting a user centric approach. So, evocative scenarios uh, consider the user goals and user behaviors and they contribute to creating more usable software systems. User scenarios are generally evocative. So, this purpose is to provide motivation and backstories explain how and why they need to interact with the uh, solution in the way that they do. So, while doing this they are intended to uh, provoke empathy and understanding and at the same time user focus in a technological solution. So, whether uh, it could be a website, it could be a, a website or a, a variable or a voice assistant. Now, scenarios in uh, software development often focus on actors assuming roles within the system. But this approach lacks a detailed understanding of the roles and how activities are performed. So, user centered scenarios prioritize personas and the relationship to roles based on user research insights. So, generic uh, roles like customer or user are not really meaningful for effective design. And so, instead of these roles can be considered 
when they are relevant like distinguishing between customer and say the passenger in specific example or transition. Now, certain roles may have greater responsibility and access to functionality, but these relationships are not always hierarchical. So, user centered scenarios uh, exercise personas and they recognize the roles alone are insufficient for guiding solution design. So, creating user scenarios involves several steps which includes identifying the user. So, determining the characteristics of the user or the persona for whom the scenario is being created. So, this may include demographic uh, information like age, gender, occupation and also the behavioral and attitudinal uh, uh, traits. So, what are their goals, uh, motivation and preferences? Second is to define the context. So, identifying the situation or context in which the user will be interacting with uh, our product or the system. Third is to determine the user's goals. So, identifying the user goals or objectives for the interaction. So, what is it that the user wants to accomplish? Now, next is outline the steps. So, here we describe the specific steps the user will take to achieve their goals. So, this can include navigating menus or entering data or also selecting some options. Next step is to consider obstacles and challenges. So, we have to identify any obstacles or challenges that the user may encounter while he is interacting with our product. So, any kind of error or any technical issue. So, we have to take care of that. Sixth is to describe the outcome. So, specifying the outcome or the result of the interaction. So, what is the user achieving from this interaction? And the final step is iterate and refine. So, in this uh, step, we will continuously refine and iterate the scenario based on the feedback from the uh, user or the team members and this will help us refine the final product. So, we have seen that overall creating user scenarios requires a deep understanding of the user's needs, behaviors and their goals and also the context in which they will be using the product. Now, uh, next technique is storyboard. So, storyboarding is a technique used in interaction design to visually represent user scenarios and interactions. So, storyboards are typically a series of illustrations or sketches that depict the different steps in a user scenario, showing how the user interacts with a product or system. So, uh, stories are a natural way for people to com communicate and explain their actions making them relatable to the stakeholders. So, these stories typically uh, focus on users goals uh, and what they aim to achieve. So, shifting the focus from technology to the human activity. So, notable references to uh, specific apps, behaviors or locations, they indicate their significance and require close examination. So, by understanding the current behavior, designers can explore the constraints, context, uh, limitations and facilitators that shape the user's actions. So, here in this example, we can see how uh, when technology is amalgamated with the user behavior, the user will not be required to stop and look at the poster for long, but now he can connect with it uh, through the web and read it while he is carrying on with his life. So, storyboarding uh, also has some benefits or advantages. So, they have visual benefits that images or 
illustrations or storyboard can speak more powerfully uh, compared to words and they add extra layers of meaning to the project. So, another is the emotional engagement that the user experience uh, focuses on problems and situations rather than the features. So, just like we saw earlier uh, how personas do, but they do it in a more engaging and visual form and people relate to them uh, more emotionally and more easily. So, another uh, reason is memorability. So, we have seen earlier also how memorability is an important point when it comes to interaction design. So, storyboards uh, let us understand the flow uh, of the problems at a glance and we are able to remember it longer. So, storyboarding can be used to communicate design concepts, they can help test and refine design and create a, a shared vision and to create a storyboard designers typically uh, follow some of these uh, steps. So, define the scenario. So, identify the user scenario or interaction that will be depicted in the storyboard. Second is sketch the frames. So, the frames or panels that depict the different steps in the user scenario. Add annotations. So, annot annotating each frame that provides uh, additional information about the users actions and refine the storyboard. So, refining the storyboard based on the feedback from the users or team members and to use it to inform the design of the product or the system. So, with this uh, we will now end today's session. So, in the next session we will uh, look at design and prototyping. So, see you in the next class.